you, folks. You know, I'm stupid, but I'm not crazy. No, frankly, I, uh, I, I'm sorry for the delay. Actually, it was my fault. I was just chatting with my, uh, some of my good friends from the team backstage. <laughs> no, I'd, uh, you wouldn't buy that either. It's, uh, frankly, I mean, congratulations, they won, but I'm not really that big a fan. I'm, well, look at me, that, uh, that right there was as much as I've moved ever. I think it's, I have to be honest, I think it's a complete waste of time working out. A friend of mine runs marathons, he's always talking about this runner's high, but he has to go 26 miles for it. That's why I smoke and drink. I get the same feeling from a flight of stairs. It is a waste of time. There, that was my workout right there. <laughs> I see these things differently now because I'm married. I've been married three months. And I, well, well. Thank you, it wasn't my idea, but thank you. <laughs> you change, I'm married now, I want things. I want things I never wanted before. I do, I want, I want a barbecue, I really want one. I want that long apron with the hot dogs dancing with the hamburgers on it and the big <laughs> floppy hat that kissed the chef, you know. That, You get to wave at the neighbors with the spatula and hi, Bill, grab a beer. <laughs> I want that so much. My father was the king of that. He loved that barbecue, the Lord of the Grill. He loved it very much. He built us a beautiful brick affair from one of the popular mechanics articles, but he must have, uh, you remember those, that easy and fun. <laughs> it was neither. The crucial measurement must have been under the staple in the magazine because <laughs> he, the grill was on a tilt and it's set in brick, so every hot dog we ever made rolled right onto the ground. Every time, just like, <laughs> and you know, fathers, you just pick it up with those long tongs. Eh, nothing wrong with that one. There you go. <laughs> the one thing he never got right on that barbecue, never got right, was the ratio of lighter fluid to coals. <laughs> and he'd light them, they'd go out, he'd light them, they'd go out, and when he got mad, which was right about then, he would, somebody else's father must have done this, he would fill a plastic baggie with lighter fluid and tie it up and toss it on the coals from about five feet away. <laughs> Not since the Manhattan Project has there been a blast like this and they only did it once. We did it every Sunday. <laughs> to this day, I think Oppenheimer got the idea from us. <laughs> Dad would toss that baggie on the coals. My mom wouldn't let us out of the house. I want to see Dad light the coals. <laughs> but she made us get under the kitchen table <laughs> and duck and cover. You got your tags on? And Dad would toss that baggie on the coals and several things would happen. <laughs> First, since energy travels faster than sound, we would see the window over the kitchen sink buckle a quarter inch. And then we'd hear that rushing fireball, that huge whoosh whoomp of all the air in the neighborhood igniting. And then my father's voice going, Whoa, geez. <laughs> then we'd run outside, and there'd be 50 birds on the ground, and, and Dad's trying to kick out the flowers. Whoa, geez, no. We're fine, stay in the house, you know. There was smoke all over. Neighbors are pulling their kids inside and yelling over the fence. That does it, Miller. This time I'm calling the cops. Oh, go ahead, you commie. <laughs> I ain't a commie. Every week, just like a Norman Rockwell painting, eh? <laughs> I'm proud of them. I'm proud that I'm married now. I'm proud that I want to try and be responsible. Mostly, I'm proud that three months ago, that congregation like this saw me stand at the altar and, and say those two little words that... Whoa, geez. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. Thanks, Marty.